just all drawn up like that. When he walked in, the Lord said, don't pray for the child. Don't lay hands on the child. Say to the mother, say to the mother, mother, you say to Satan, Satan, I'm walking in love now. Take your hands off my child. Dad Hagen said, and the seizures stopped immediately. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. He said, I'm not really walking in love. Because I'm walking in love, I'm not really thinking about whether they like me or not. I'm really thinking, do I love them? Am I going to walk in love towards them? Praise the Lord. Lay, lay hands on your head and say, Lord, help me with my mind right now. I mean. So with Dad Hagen, he said, this love is the way to victory. Are y'all ready? Now I'm going to read some different 1 Corinthians 13. And then if you go to chapter 14, verse 1, where it says, follow after charity, the Amplified Bible says, follow after it, make it your aim, make it your great quest. When it says make it your quest, you look up the word quest in the dictionary, and the word quest simply means this, uh, anything that occupies your full attention for at least 20 years. So for the next 20 years, you want to make 1 Corinthians 13 your great quest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You say, oh, I was going to work on it for the next week. Now, the next 20 years, hmm. so let's read 1 Corinthians 13, and I'm going to go ahead and skip to Jack Hayford's translation. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Ready? And how many of y'all have this little book? I gave everybody one last time. And so if you don't have one, we do have some at the back. And if we don't have enough, we'll send you some more. It just has 1 Corinthians 13 in different translations. And Dad Hagen said, if you'll read it every day, determined to do it, he said, the first thing that will happen is the devil will flee away from you. He said, the second thing that will happen is your health will spring forth speedily. He said, the next thing that will happen is there will be the blessing of the Lord will overflow. Now, you see why the devil wants to mess you up in this area. I said, let's try. You see why the devil wants to mess you up in this area? Because he don't want the blessing to overflow and he don't want you healthy. And he wants just to harass you. But if you say, I'm walking in love, Mr. Devil, I'm walking in love now. Remember the story Dad Hagen told about the lady that their little be beautiful blue-eyed girl that, that had uh, epilepsy and had those seizures at, at, what, three years old and um, <laughs> was in the church service. Dad Hagen was teaching about walking in love. If you don't, if you don't walk, love your brother, then you're a murderer. And she tried to tell him, well, I'm a preacher's wife, you know, and how can you call me a murderer? And he said, well, I didn't call you a murderer. First John 3 says, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Come on. He said, and that includes your mother-in-law. Because he had heard that pastor's wife say, I hate my mother-in-law. He said, then you're a murderer. She said, well, I, you know, I got filled with the Holy Ghost as a child and all this. He said, well, the Bible didn't say it. God said, you're a murderer. You said, you hate your mother-in-law. And so he said, look at me and say, I hate my mother-in-law. So she did. And he said, what did you feel on the inside? She said, something scratching on the inside of me. He said, that's your spirit, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, because the Holy Spirit inside don't agree with what you're saying. Really, just your flesh and your feelings. Because really, on the inside of you, you love your mother-in-law. She said, well, what am I supposed to do? He said, act like you would if you did love, because you do. So she invited her mother-in-law over, you know, and she said, well, you know, she is a nice lady. You heard about the guy that didn't know what to get his mother-in-law for Christmas, you know? 
So he finally decided he got her a cemetery plot. So she wasn't real happy about that. So he didn't get her nothing the next year. So she said, why didn't you give me anything this year? And he said, well, you didn't use what I got you last year. So I wanted to get something. Mean, that's just mean, isn't it? That was her problem. She hated her mother-in-law, right? Well, but she's a Christian, spirit-filled Christian. And so she keeps talking that way. And he said, no, you're going to have to change that. So she said, well, I'm going to act like a witch about it over. So she said, you know, I do. I do love her. Well, that, then she had this daughter that was three or four years old and having the seizures. And so she said, dad, asked Dad Hagen if you would come by our house on the way to church because my daughter's having one of these seizures. And the best doctors in the whole country have tried to treat her. And she would just get all drawn up and no success and nobody can help her. So Brother Hagen walked into the room with that beautiful little girl, just all, just all drawn up like that. When he walked in, the Lord said, don't pray for the child. Don't lay hands on the child. Say to the mother, say to the mother, mother, you say to Satan, Satan, I'm walking in love now. Take your hands off my child. Dad Hagen said, and the seizures stopped immediately. Woo, and never came back. He said, years later, just a little bit started coming back, and he said, no, 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 you don't, Mr. Devil. I'm walking in love now. Take your hands off my child. Somebody said, well, how did that work for her? Did you know that would work for you? Not just in healing, but in your finances and in every area of your life. If you'd resist the devil and say, Mr. Devil, I'm walking in love now. I'm quick to forgive. Let's try that again. I'm quick to forgive. I freely forgive. Hallelujah. Just while you're standing there praying, Jesus said you can forgive. So you can't stand there for 20 years. Somebody says it's going to take me a long time to get over this. It's going to take you about as long as it takes you to forgive. Because the moment you forgive, you're over it. You say, well, how am I going to forgive? I can't. Oh, yeah, you can if you want to. Because the God kind of loves on the inside of you. Matter of fact, when the thoughts come, you just say, uh, I resist that. I've freely forgiven. And I'm walking in love. And I expect God's best blessing. Praise the Lord. Everybody say, I'm walking in love now. Mr. Devil, take your hands off my body. My finances, my family. I'm walking in love now. Woo, that means love is the way to victory. That's the way your faith is going to work. All right, let me read this 1 Corinthians 13 real quickly here. I've got a few more minutes. Love, y'all got 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8? Love, what's the next word? What's it say in your Bible? <laughs> I knew I didn't like it when I saw the second word. <laughs> love suffers. <laughs> so that means if you're going to walk in love, expect it to be painful. Are y'all still here? He said, <laughs> he said it suffers. How long? Long time. <laughs> People say, well, I was going to walk in love till it started hurting me. Listen, walk in love, he said, suffers long. How many believe that, that God's put up with you a long time? Oh, don't look around right now. He says, God put up with some of your stuff a long time. Patient. Woo! One translation here that says, patient with imperfect people. Woo! And, and kind. <laughs> That's the God kind of love. And, and you know, how many know, you know, the natural human love and, and, you know, when you fall in love. So I like all these love songs like uh, George Jones, country music. It says, he stopped loving her today. 
place to read upon the door. Then they carried him away. What that means is he died. So he loved her. She left him. He died. And that's when he stopped loving her. So I had to explain that to my wife. Now, if you take Whitney Houston and she's going to sing, I always love you. Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all like those kind of love songs? Well, natural human love, come on. Because when I fell in love with my wife, you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't see about her until after we got married. <laughs> after we got married, I was like, you know, I've ever, never really noticed that about her. <laughs> and so I kind of started, <laughs> all right, it says love covers a multitude of sins. So you can tell if you're, my daddy would say, you can tell whether you're walking in love or not by how people look to you. Like if you're constantly looking at people and seeing what's wrong with them and pointing out the faults, then you're not doing as good as you think you are. Y'all still here? So in Colorado, you go certain seasons and the river is down low, so there's a lot of trash and limbs and logs and junk in the river. But you go the next season when the water's high and you can't even see the trash. Come on, so when your love is high flowing, you don't even see all the trash. It's kind of like the guy that while he was sleeping, they put Limburger cheese underneath his nose. You ever smell Limburger cheese? Now, when I was in college, a friend of mine was getting married. So we did some pretty rough things to a couple of those guys. This guy, all we did to him is we put Limburger cheese on his engine motor before he went on the honeymoon. So Limburger cheese really stinks. So when he came back, he's like, I never could get past all the chicken farms in Arkansas. So he thought <laughs> it's really on his car. So the guy was sleeping and they put Limburger cheese underneath his nose. And when he woke up, he went, man, it stinks in here. So he went into the kitchen. He went, man, it stinks in here. He went into the living room. He said, it stinks in here. He walked out the front door, looked up the sky, and he said, man, the whole world stinks. <laughs> so anytime it stinks everywhere you go. I said, anytime it stinks everywhere you go, we might have found out where the stink is. Are y'all still here? Yeah. Come on. The moment you make that adjustment and walk in the love of God. Anybody know what comes up in the fruit of the Spirit after love? Joy. Now we know why you're miserable. <laughs> you lose your joy. All right, let me finish reading this. Love suffers long, has patience with imperfect people. Love is kind, active in doing good. You know why that means love is kind? You know, it's nice to smile at people, but really it's saying getting involved with doing something to help people. Yes. An act of kindness. So, anybody that ever tells you, if there's anything I can ever do for you, let me know. You know they ain't going to do nothing. Because the people going to do something are already doing it. You know what I mean? How many ever had people say that? If anything I can do for you, just anything. Just let me know if anything I can ever do for you. They ain't never going to do nothing for you. They hadn't done nothing. <laughs> they ain't planning on doing nothing. But it sounds good. So I just started answering them back. See anything? <laughs> How many of y'all want to start doing this? If anybody says, anything I can ever do for you, say, you know, I did actually have something come up. Actually, I could use $500 cash right now. I mean, I don't know why that just came up, but I appreciate you asking. At what level would you like to jump in? <laughs> well, no, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't mean, you didn't mean nothing is what you didn't mean. So what he's saying is love is kind means the people that walk in love, they are already in. Doing something. 
to help somebody. Sometimes people say, well, I wasn't led by the Spirit. Well, you could have been led by love. All right, let's keep going here. Now he says, love is kind, active and doing good. Love does not envy since it is non-possessive and non-competitive. It actually wants others to get ahead. Hence, it does not parade itself. Love has a self-effacing quality. It is not ostentatious. You know what that means? Ostentatious just means, you know, constantly drawing attention to yourself. So he says, it's not ostentatious. It is not puffed up. It does not treat other people arrogantly. It does not behave rudely. It displays good manners and courtesy. Love does not seek its own, insisting on its own rights and demanding precedence. Rather, it is unselfish. Love is not provoked. You can almost tell the moment you start getting grouchy. You know, the guy they asked him said, did, did you wake up grouchy this morning? He said, no, I just let her sleep. So, <laughs> so now, this is the moment, you might want to say let him sleep, right? So, when you... How many of y'all ever been a little grouchy? You can tell the moment you start getting provoked. My mama would tell me this. She said, the moment you start getting provoked or angry, then you're not far from sin. Because that's just the first disposition that's going to take you to your mess. So you better deal with it at the beginning. I kind of like where David's mighty men and one of them, it said that he stood in a field of beans and he defended the whole field of beans. And it says everybody else ran off, but he stood there and fought in the field of beans against the enemy, the Philistine. And he's fighting there in a field of beans. And I thought, wow, why is he fighting over them beans? Everybody else ran off. Why don't he just run off? Let them have the beans. You can always get more beans. But he'd been hanging out with David. So he had a spirit of faith. And that's why David killed a lion and a bear and killed Goliath. So he was fighting over those beans. I said, well, Lord, why is he fighting over the beans? And the Lord said, because if you let the enemy have your beans, it won't be long. He's coming after your taco, your burrito, and your whole Mexican dinner. <laughs> Are y'all still here? If you let him have your beans, he's coming after your barbecue. You understand? That means in the middle of the onset of the enemy in your attitude, you deal with him right at the first part of it. You say, no, you're not getting my beans. I'm going to walk in love. Come on, my attitude, my disposition. Let's finish reading this. He said, it's not provoked. It is not irritable or touchy. Touchy. It's not rough or hostile, graceful under pressure. Love thinks no evil. It does not keep an account of the wrongs done to it. It erases resentments, doesn't keep a record of wrongs. How many of y'all ever counted it up? That third, fourth, that fifth time. <laughs> how many can remember how many times years later? Oh, right, we won't go into that. So, with love keeps no account of the wrong. It erases resentments. It does not rejoice in iniquity and finding satisfaction in the shortcomings of others and spreading an evil report. I remember Dad Hagen. I mean, you couldn't even, I sat at the table and ate with him many times. And I had preachers at that table that would come up to the table and they would start telling Dad Hagen something bad about somebody else. He totally ignored them. He would either keep eating his food or he would say, bless their heart. He said, that's how I stay healthy. He said, so don't be bringing me the gossip. He said, I don't want to hear it. Boy, it's getting quiet. I guess we better keep reading here. He said, And then he says, it does not find satisfaction in the shortcomings of others and spreading an evil report. Rather, it rejoices in the truth. That means it aggressively advertises the good. 
Love bears all things, defending and holding other people up. Love believes the best about others, credits them with good intentions, and is not suspicious. Love hopes all things, never gives up on people, but affirms their future. Love endures all things, persevering and remaining loyal until the end. Woo! What do you think about that? That's the way God loves you. I said, that's the way God loves us. I said, that's the way God loves us. That's what's in the blood of Jesus is the love of Christ and the love of God that cleanses us from all sin. And God literally sees us through the blood and calls things which be not as though they were. Mark and Trina invite you to the Supernatural Leadership Conference, March 5th through the 8th in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have a power-packed lineup of speakers featuring our host pastors, Mark and Trina, Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, Mac and Lynn Hammond, and more. This is a life-changing event you won't want to miss with practical instructions, powerful prayer services, anointed worship, and times of refreshing in the presence of God. Join us Mark 5th through the 8th and take your leadership to another supernatural level. Register today at markhankins.org. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. God not only commands us to love one another, but he has given us the love to do it with. God's love is in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Anytime you feel mistreated, you know the devil is working on you. Walking in the God kind of love is our greatest challenge, but also our greatest reward. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13 a description of the love of God. It is often called the definition of the God kind of love and explains the way God loves us. In Mark Hankins' book, Love the Secret to Success, he explains how the greatest quest in life should be walking in the God kind of love. This book also has many translations of 1 Corinthians 13 that will help you renew your mind to the love of God. You can't grow in God without growing in love. You will also receive the brand new CD set, The Royal Law, Understanding the Love of God. Pastor Mark teaches, as we practice speaking and responding with love, our faith will grow and we will walk in victory. Faith works by love. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, Love the Secret to Success, and the four CD set, The Royal Law, Understanding the Love of God. You can also download the MP3s of these messages in our app for free. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Mission Partners. Together we can, together we will. You cannot grow in God without growing in love. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were challenged, but you were also encouraged to walk in His love. My parents want to get this message to you today because we know it is life changing. We want to get this love, the secret to success, to you for your gift of any amount. All you have to do is call the number on the screen or you can visit markhankins.org. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. My name's Kevin Burns. This is my wife Elizabeth and we live and pastor in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I grew up here, you know, my, my family's been a part of the church here for probably 30 something years, a long, a long time. Well, so, your parents were friends with yeah, Pastor Yeah, my parents, you know, my whole family got saved here. Uh, my mother grew up Baptist, but started hearing, standing on the Word of God, yeah. standing in faith and claiming your family and uh, for the, the gospel and that they're going to be saved, you know, so the, really the message of faith that she learned here, she stood upon that revelation mm -hmm. and we all got saved, right? I got saved, my brother, my sister, my dad, we all got saved. And then upon that, then we all attended here, grew up here, I went to Bible college here. So uh, we've known them intimately, you know, and personally, not, and also uh, as pastors. So we could never, I could never say enough. There was a, a time 
uh, whenever, like in our marriage, mm -hmm. where we had busted up, right, she left me. <laughs> we had a lot of disagreements. We had a lot of disagreements, way. right? <laughs> or, so yeah. we, there was a point in our life, in our marriage, where we split up, we yeah. busted, you know, we, we separated. So i never forget, I called Pastor Martin in the middle yeah. of the night, and I said, she's moving out. She is, she is done with me. She's leaving. And he said, hey, be at my office at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So we showed up at his office. Pastor Trina was there. And I said, you know, we're having a hard time getting along, and she's moving out. And he said, let's just pray. And I'll never forget this, because then he just prayed, and we just prayed in the Holy Spirit for 15 minutes, probably, mm -hmm. just prayed in the Holy Spirit, which is pretty unique. You know, a lot, most people don't start their counseling. They'll maybe open with a little prayer. But like Pastor Mark was like, hey, let's just pray. So he just prayed in God the Holy right Spirit there. for yeah. 15 minutes, and then uh, just talked to us and counseled us. And by the end mm -hmm. of the meeting, uh, things were a lot better, right? We still took time. We, you know, she moved. The Baton Rouge there was something in here. my heart changed and that um, I'll never forget now that you mentioned that in that time with you know we were they were taking personal time with us and a, we were having a crisis right there in that moment and for them to reach out and to take us in really pull us in I remember in that time though in that meeting um, there was a change in my heart that and I know that it was just through that relationship that with Pastor Mark and Pastor Trina um, that there was some some guidance and some covering, you know, that through that relationship we have, they are such a covering and such a um, an avenue that the Lord uses to speak to us, to encourage us, to redirect us at times, to bring correction when needed. And so that relationship to us is so precious. It is something that we guard and that we treasure because the Lord, I mean, He speaks to us. That's an avenue where we receive from God. Well, that's just one time, you know, my yeah. dad got cancer. Pastor Mark would come in off of the road, go, he's out preaching, 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 you know, but he, when he was in town, he would be at my, at my mother and father's house at 5 a.m. He'd be there praying with my dad, praying the Holy Spirit for an hour you know, and counsel and sit there with my dad, encourage my dad, and did that not once, but multiple times. Mm -hmm. So between our own marriage and then with my family, yeah. uh, we've been uh, inside the ropes with them for decades. Worked in the Blessing. office alongside them, been in their home multiple times. It's always been a privilege and an honor. Yeah. But at the whole to totality of it is he's always consistent. He's always faithful. He's okay. generous yeah. to his own hurt. He's merciful with people that I would not be as merciful with. <laughs> he is, he's, he's extremely loyal to people that have been disloyal, right? So it's always been uh, our uh, desire is to reciprocate and just be there and love him and love them. And uh, not just them, but their whole family, the kids, the grandkids and all that. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.